Just gonna record. We're gonna get a recording notification. Yes. Hello again, everyone, and thank you so much for coming. Um, I'm very happy about the, this meeting. Actually, I've had the honor of working with Citizens for a Greener Elsa Brante, and I'm very glad to have with us tonight Sharon, Kim, and John uh, of. Uh, the board of Citizen for Greener, Elsa Brante. Sharon is a founder and has long been the coordinator of the board and Kim is now the current coordinator. Um, Sharon has an inert passion for um, plants and she's a landscaping professional. Kim is a PhD student at UC Berkeley majoring in environmental health sciences and John Hollander is very modest about himself. I know he's organizing national conferences about ethics and things like that, but he doesn't say much about himself. Anyway, let us focus on our community and uh, talk about the possibilities for a community park and a community hub or community center. Please get us started. Okay, well, first let me say, so Hilla, thank you again for uh, reinvigorating this project which we started, uh, Citizens for a Greener El Sobrante, started it about two years ago. And um, many people here tonight have contributed when we um, went on a fundraising campaign um, to try and raise money to purchase it. Um, we didn't get anywhere close, but um, more people know about it than before, than we got started, uh, than when we got started. And um, I've always, when I first moved here 10 years ago and saw the Maori property, um, I immediately had this vision, what a perfect place to have a community, to build community. Um, it's a gorgeous piece of land. And if you haven't seen it, um, we have a video on, on the website a citizen greener El Sobrante. Kim, what is it? Citizens for Greener or Greener El Sobrante? Our website is greenerelsobrante.org. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can, I'll post some links in the chat um, for the, the video that is, you know, a very nice uh, kind of on the ground look at the property itself. Um, and I'll make sure to post um, or share in the chat the link to the petition that we're going to be discussing, and I'll share a link to our website as well. Mm, okay, great. Yeah, it's a very nice video, and, and we were able to get a drone in it, uh, not in the drone itself, but the drone took a picture of an overview that you can actually see. Um, oh, there is there. There's everybody. You can actually see what the property looks like from above and notice the, the, the um, very strong presence of uh, the creek as it meanders through the downside of the, of the land, uh, which gets very quiet. I mean, it's so special. As you walk onto the, the, the property, the de the, it declines towards the creek. So the busyness of San Pablo Dam Road goes away and it becomes very quiet, very serene and very beautiful. You get taken back in time. It's, it's very unique that way. And um, it can offer, um, um, you know, it's a project for the public good. It's a project to build community. It's a project for, the, for a community development. Um, it, it will be community driven, but it also has in front a potential for a community center and for a commercial enterprise to build revenue for, for the property. So we realized that we're not probably going to be successful unless we really get together and strategize. But one way to, to um, build the fund or to, to acquire the property would be to get the county seriously involved, to get them committed to be involved uh, with grant, uh, um, specifically with uh, Prop 68, which is the state Prop 68. And uh, it's the um, Park and Water Bond Act that was several years ago. It's now in its fourth round. There's really hundreds of millions of dollars in that fund. And the fund is designed for acquisition as well as development. Um, 
the maintenance part um, is not included in that. And that's been Joya's big obstacle because the county doesn't have funds for maintenance. But we as an organization and through our own experience of, as an organization know that um, with the community behind it, we can strategize and, um, and uh, develop a, a maintenance fund or at least the labor through volunteerism um, and uh, other, we have other ideas about it. I won't get into that now, but um, we feel that if the county were to acquire the land, uh, if, if they could commit to that, uh, because the property, the owners are asking about a million dollars for the property. And um, that's, it's, it's in, in a prime location. It's one and a half acres. It has a lot of potential, um, I, it, but they're nervous about, um, about the maintenance part. So um, we're, we've developed, thanks to Sohelia's ideas about this, um, um, a petition that we thought we could do online. She has some experience with that. And um, we thought if we could get, there's about 20,000 people in El Sobrante, the population. I don't think they're all adults, <laughs> but um, if we, I, I don't know how many would, signatures we'd need to get to really push Joya and the county in this direction to take it seriously. Um, I think a few thousand would be impressive. Um, I don't know. Um, welcome lots of feedback here and lots of questions. Um, but um, we thought this might be a good approach to try and get the, the county to apply. Um, we'd have to get them to move quickly because the next round um, deadline is March 1st, I think. So we need to give the county a couple of months to pull things together, bureaucracy wheels run very slowly, as you probably know. Um, so we don't have much time, but if we have the energy and the will behind it, um, you know, we can just make a concerted, concerted effort to just reach out to as many people as possible through as many mailing lists and um, organizations. There's lots of stakeholders in the county, uh, in, in El Sobrante, and we've dealt and we're, we've worked with many of them. Um, so we're hoping that we want to make another push at this and um, we're, we're giving this presentation tonight, hoping for your support and ideas and um, your help with all of this. So uh, if, if anyone in the or in uh, Greener El Sobrante, Kim, John, want to say anything more, we can take some questions and ideas. Sure, yeah, so hi everyone. My name's Kim um, and I've lived in the Richmond part of El Sobrani, uh for eight years. Um, and um, basically, so I, I am sharing on my screen the petition that would go out to people to sign. This is what it looks like after I've signed it on my end. Um, and just for a little bit of context, if you don't know what the Maori property is, it's, you know, when you're going down Dam Road, um, it's the abandoned station that's there, but um, it's that plus the beautiful piece of, you know, Creekside uh, property behind it as well. Um, and, you know, we kind of have this like bigger vision about having a, a Creekside boardwalk that connects the library all the way down um, to El Portel with like bike and pedestrian access on a, you know, a, a secure boardwalk um, near the creek. But this would be kind of the entry point to even going down that path at all. Um, and I've been involved with some of the community meetings that the county has put, up, put on, which I think maybe some of you guys have also been part of the Envision, you know, 2040 Contra Costa meetings that they've been putting on. But the community, you know, the, the, the drafts that they're putting out with feedback from the community 
a, a lot of this is in line with the with the county's own language that that they're putting out <laughs> into documents that is supposed to shape our community for the next 20 years. Um, and I just don't see why the county shouldn't take action and, and jump on this opportunity when there's funding available. Um, they just have to kind of pull the trigger and and um, and take the lead on it. Um, so that's um, pretty much you know it's it's just a one page petition. It you can send it you know via link. And I guess what we're asking for tonight is you know, where, what groups are you guys part of that would be interested in, in putting the word out to their own listservs? Um, you know, are, are folks willing to post it on Nextdoor, I think, um, or other, you know, community websites, Facebook. Um, and the, uh, I see a question here about who can sign the petition. Um, and I would say it's, you know, it doesn't, there's no requirements around like they have to be an unincorporated Esso Brownie. I think this is a project that serves Western Contra Costa broadly. Um, you know, I, I think it would be a real asset um, for, for several of the surrounding communities as well. So I would say Elsa Brownie, Richmond, Pinole, um, San Pablo, any, any, people who work, live, or play in these communities um, deserve something nice like this um, in the heart of our little town. Um, well, I also might interject that the uh, yeah. county has tallied um, before the pandemic, about 30,000 vehicles traverse San Pablo down, down road downtown. That's a lot of exposure. That's a lot of potential for people to pull over and have a respite and if there's a cafe, um, get some coffee or tea or whatever. But um, it will be, it's very accessible. It's a very accessible piece of property. So we would love to open it up to the folks on the call for questions or comments or ideas about how to get the word out about this. Um, also, Sharon, I'm wondering kind of what the thoughts are around like a cutoff date for, you know, we, we want to reach as many community members as, as possible, but like when do we stop collecting signatures and hand it over to Joya so that they can have enough time to put something together? Well, I would think that we'd need to get a formidable, formidable amount, formidable number of signatures to make it have any meat to it, any weight, carry any weight. Um, I've dealt, I've worked a lot with institutions that take forever to get things done. And it's not something they're going to do overnight if they want to, it's going to take a while. So um, at the latest, I mean, mid-January, I think, just maybe two, three weeks from now. Do you think that we could do like a change.org so that we can get it circulated widely on social media? I have to explain actually that we are already using Adobe Sign. So you can sign online. Uh, some of the volunteers at 94803 Emergency Preparedness Alliance looked into it and realized in California, it's legal to collect signatures online, especially in COVID times, it's very important. So she helped us post this online too. We are going to send you the link. If you are in my mailing list, you will receive it. If you're in Citizens for a Greener El Sobrante, you will receive it through their mailing list. If you have your own mailing list, uh, please um, give me your email address. We'll be happy to have you help us. And um, again, if you volunteer to collect signatures on paper, that's also welcome. That's what we did in the past experience with petition. We did it both on paper and online, the more the better. So I just wanted to add that um, having a park is not just about having a park or a community center, it's about building a community. As you know, El Sobrante Valley does not have character as a community because it's divided between unincorporated El Sobrante and um, the city of Richmond. Uh, this petition is to start building a community for ourselves, building a park, building a hub, a community center. The good things about this park is that as um, Sharon and Kim explained, it's 
close um, to the library. It's a Creekside Park. It can be connected to the Bay Trail. Eventually, there are plans actually. Uh, Wildcat Trail in uh, mm -hmm. San Pablo is connected to the uh, Bay Trail. We can connect this as well. It's good for the businesses. It's good for the pollution. Uh, we're going to have more uh, trees planted and cleans there. There are so many benefits. If you know of more benefits, write it down. We are going to use it in our write up to invite people to sign the petition. And if you have any time to volunteer in any way, you're more than, more than welcome to join the efforts. John, would so, you like uh, to add something? I wanted to get back to my question. Are we saying that it's a no to the change.org petition? Are we saying that we only want this one Adobe style petition? Because I don't know how far we can get that circulated. If we're trying to go as far as we possibly can, I'm saying that we should probably utilize social media. Yeah, so this is a shareable link that brings you to the petition. So you can share it in the same ways as, as a change.org um, petition. We thought about going the route of like a change.org or move on. Um, but the downside with that is, um, you know, I think these like more certified signatures carry a little bit more weight, especially when we're approaching, you know, our elected officials um, versus, you know, like a change.org uh, petition where, you know, people who have never heard of Elsa Brani are signing it, right? Um, sure. So, so just to clarify, there there is a shareable link that will that that will uh, circulate, and that's what we're asking people to share is is the link to the petition. Um, can you can you post so, it on Facebook through the C for Ages page? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, thank you. Yeah, and um, just in terms of some of the questions about um, like paper versions of this as well, to maybe try and get some of our less tech literate uh, populations signing. Um, we can we can definitely share a PDF for folks to print out if that's something that they're interested in um, collecting you know in-person signatures, but we are kind of emphasizing the virtual route right now just because of the you know the pandemic and everything. So but if there's you know if there's an interest in that, we can definitely share not only the the link, that take people to sign the petition, but also like a PDF that people could print out. So Zina, can I ask you a question, Zena? Yes. Um, are you still on the on the 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 board, yeah. with the Mac? No, I left it in November oh. of last year. Oh, okay. I know you were talking about that. <laughs> Do you have any ideas? Is there any possibility that somehow we can utilize or somehow the county can take on utilizing their extensive mailing list? Mm. Uh, we can ask Tom Lang because I believe he he was like interim president or excuse me, interim chair. He'd be the best person to ask. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know if they're holding monthly meetings anymore or what's even happening with that. No, I get Mac um, notices. Okay. They... I don't anymore. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> you were on the, and you're not on the list. How interesting. <laughs> it is interesting. <laughs> Sharon, I have a question for you, uh, to be fair, actually, because this is a petition to John Joya to act and request that grant from Prop 68 uh, for the county and specifically for the El Sobrante Valley. Has he ever been approached before? And what was the response? You mean regarding Prop 68 itself? Regarding this park specifically, has the idea been shared with him? Oh, the park? The park is, he knows all about the park. He came and how come he doesn't do anything about it? He's fixated on the library. That's his pet project. Um, and he will consider the pet, the library as the hub in his mind that is the hub. Um, he, he speaks supportively about it, but, um, and he's been there, he's taken some photo ops. We did a tour 
um, uh, which he attended with um, his assistant. I'm forgetting his name right now. James. James. Yes. Yes. And um, yeah, he knows we we toured it uh, when when they were looking at a, the idea of having a park. Uh, the Maori property was included as a site originally, and he chose the library. Um, so he knows all about it. He, he's um, he's just not that he's not committed to developing. It's it has a lot to do with money, I'm sure, and the energy, uh, the 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 lack of a definite maintenance program, and. Um, I don't know, maybe he just is just not that interested. But if, you know, the people, if, if the community can, can come on strong and put pressure on him, we might. Yeah, traditionally politicians don't move. They don't do anything until they see there is a strong push and request mm -hmm. by the community that that's mm -hmm. where we come in. And that's our role to support mm -hmm. the idea by signing this petition. And mm -hmm. I strongly hope that we do get thousands of signature so please pass the word. Uh, I'm going to send an email about the petition uh, soon tomorrow. Uh, pass it around. The more signatures, the better. And hopefully we're going to invite John Joya to one of our meetings. And um, after we collect the signatures and submit to him and ask him what he's going to do about it. How does he receive uh, um, the petition? How does that work? Uh, we're going to email it to him. We're going to email the text of the petition plus a link to where all the signatures are so he can see them all. Um, um, so there's a, oh. I have a question. How many signatures do you think it will take to convince John Joy? I know it's a hard question to answer, but do you have a goal of a certain number? That, that is the question. That's the $64,000 question. Um, I don't, I think thousands, I don't know, I'm just, there's, I mean, I don't know what the norm is when you have a population and you're running a petition drive, there's probably a percentage. Um, I don't know what that is. Would it make sense to ask John what he needs, like what he wants to see? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, what does he want to see to convince him to apply for the funds? Maybe he has an idea. If there's 20,000 people in, in El Sobrani, maybe he wants to see, you know, 50, per, well, majority would be enough for him. Well, I'm sure he knows there's a strong support. for it. We don't have a park in Richmond or El Sobrante unincorporated. I mean, there is no park. Go to the other part of Richmond. They do have parks, actual parks. We don't have anything. We have a library and a playground behind my house. That's all we have. The city of Richmond says it'd rather sell its lots rather instead of turning them into parks to save money. And the county doesn't do anything because we are quiet as citizens. We don't say anything. I went to one of the meetings of the um, Contra Costa County supervisors, people from Orinda come, five people came for a minor issue regarding a dog shelter. And I don't even remember what it was. And I couldn't believe it. They raise their voices. They get what they want. We never do it. We're just too calm and quiet and too busy seriously with our jobs. I mean, we don't have the luxury to become politically active, but hopefully now we can do something. Sorry, John, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. Oh, you didn't interrupt me. I didn't say anything. <laughs> um, there's a couple questions in the chat that would be good to touch on. So um, questions about who would manage it um, and who would maintain it to make sure it's, you know, upkept safely. But I mean, as Sharon mentioned, that that's, those are questions that be answered through collaborative meetings. It's just kind of the point right now is, I mean, this is a, I think a big thing here is that we don't want someone else just to buy this property and turn it into another gas station in Elsa. You know, it's like, we don't need another liquor store. We don't need another gas station. <laughs> like this is such a unique property um, that, uh, we don't want to let this opportunity go to waste. And so I think the priority is really acquiring the, the piece of land for the community itself. And then, you know, the, the details around like maintenance can fall into place. But um, 
but it's going to take some collaboration to think creatively about those solutions because that's always the 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 tie up for the county to not invest in green infrastructure in our community it's you know well we don't have money for maintenance but i don't i mean that's I think that awesome. if I think that if there's if the county got the land, did the improvements to make it into a community based uh, and usable space, then the community would also respond in terms of uh, figuring out the maintenance. Yes, I mean we we've strategized because a lot of that. If if you if you build it, they will come. <laughs> you know the current owners. Uh, how open are they um, to community buying their property as a park, and where do the current owners live? Uh, yes, I can answer that. Um, they're very enthusiastic about having a park there, um, and they. Um, um, they would be thrilled if, if that happened. It's part of their legacy. Um, originally, we told them, you know, we would name it the Mallory Park mm -hmm. because they, when they decided to put it on the market, when the owner, the mother of the two surviving siblings, the, um, uh, when the, the owner died, she, um, well, I'm sorry about that. And it went on the market. And I had already approached them when I first moved here. I saw that, I had that vision. And I went and I met Ruby Mowry, the, the owner who lived on, on the property in the back. Yeah. I presented this idea to her and to her, her son was there one time, I visited her twice. Um, and um, so I presented, I was planted, I went to plant a seed. So after she passed, um, he, he contacted me. And he said, you know, I remember our meetings and what you had said. And we very much, because I wrote him a condolence letter. And I said, if you're still entertaining this idea, please contact me, um, so to speak. And he did. And he, they decided they'd give us an opportunity, see for ages, to acquire the property before they put it on the market. Okay. So, but it was a big too big of a challenge for us, you know, to do that in two years now to raise the money. They can't, they're not in a position financially to give it away. Mm -hmm. um, they, 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 they need the money. So um, uh, they, so it has to be, it's for sale. And um, one, one idea too, and I've been talking, I've been in contact with the realtor for over these, past couple of years and he knows of our plan and our idea and they're all for it they're all supportive of it and um so he's been talking to his many potential buyers see the property and they they want a commercial space oh they're not interested in the park what are they going to do with it so we're trying to move the idea that form a to form a partnership of sorts some kind of collaboration where they own the front and um, county um, c for age is just too small to take this on financially or any other way so there would need to be some other partnership there's the Ohlone group uh, I forget how you um, spell it, pronounce it the Segoria Tayland Trust it's um, and I I've spoken with them and they were interested in the property they have other things on their plate right now and so they've declined to want to acquire it, to purchase it. But they might consider it if, as a partnership with the county mm -hmm. to do the park part. Maybe somebody else wants to come in on the commercial part. Um, I think the best scenario would be if the nonprofit in the county owned the whole property. Mm -hmm. um, and then it would be, be beautiful. Um, and you know, we'd make it beautiful and very accessible and usable and create lots of amenities and services for the public. Um, but it would be, I mean, the exciting part is that if it could be acquired, the community can then get together, um, have a number of forums and meetings 
to, to think about how do we want to develop this park? What does the community need? What do they want? And that would be so exciting to, see, to, to have that happen. Um, and and, and I, I know that it can succeed. I just know that if we have the will to make that happen. Thank you. Yeah, and, and, and the, the Elks is right next to the Maori property. <clears throat> Uh, and they they actually share a, a part of the, the boundary and the B of A. The other side is the car wash. Oh, okay. Yeah, th so that gives you, um, and then you've got around the corner, you've got the library. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a wonderful area of the downtown. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah. I would like to add that Sergey, I hope I pronounced your name correctly, um, has made two points. Um, do you want to try your mic again? He said yeah. his mic. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yeah. Go ahead, please. Okay. So my points are pretty simple going back to the um, mechanical question of how many signatures or what, what does it take to get John interested? And I was just Probably most of you can see this in the chat bar. In here. I, just, I just provided the history that for the good table, um, Adachi's struggle where the old Adachi nursery site was going to be turned into a gas station. We kind of pulled that back from the jaws of disaster with John's help. And prior to the help appearing, we had over a thousand, I think, signatures on a petition generally opposing the gas station. So that's just kind of a, a quantitative benchmark, I guess. Thank you. you guys... So let us have set a goal of collecting 1,000 signatures by the end of the year. We're going to email the petition I, around. I think to... that's, yeah. that's a good goal. Yes. And it should be doable. Sorry. Okay. George, I know you have some experience with this, and I didn't hear all that you said. It was cut off for me. What do you think if if um, the population of El Sobrante is about twenty thousand? They're not all adults, though. Um, how many signatures would would be impressive? Or it was would... saying that the Adachi um, initiative started out with a petition with a with a thousand signatures, and that got the attention of Joya. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, great. We're okay. Talking about as a benchmark, and Sharon just want to point you to the chat that his comments are um, are also written in the chat. You can look at that. Yeah, that he was just reiterating mm -hmm. over that's... the phone, and um, I see it now. Yeah, um, also just wanted to acknowledge your other point, Serge, about uh, kind of the messaging around community centers. Like, I think we don't want to compete with the library or with the Adachi property, the Good Table initiative, right? We want to be in community with <laughs> these other initiatives that are um, in progress or some are further along than others, but like, um, I think that's a really good point that like, we don't want to say that there is no community hub at all in Nelson Brani, but we see the need for more spaces for community and definitely we don't have like a playground. <laughs> like, I think we can safely say there is no safe place for children to like actually play um, in unincorporated El Brani. Like, I think that's a safe claim to make. Very good. One question that remains is the issue of maintenance. I wonder if you can ask the city of Richmond and county to be in charge of the maintenance together, or does it have to be the county? I'm pretty sure it has to be the county because it's not located in Richmond, right? That area yeah. that is specifically in El Sobrante. Yeah, yeah. And Richmond isn't going to take on another project that's not within their city. Yeah. Or and they don't have funds for it. I mean, they've got the air quotes general fund, but we I, I highly doubt that they would share. Okay, so what is the role of the city council and the mayor of uh, Richmond in support of the project? Nothing, or should we write to them and ask them to contact Joya and support it? I mean, 
mean, I'm a Richmond resident, right? Um, and so it would be good to see collaboration between, you know, especially in this community where these lines are blurred all the time. I walk down the street and I'm in an incorporated El Sobrani, um, where the stock ends, right? But um, so, you know, I really like this, the city council and the mayor doesn't have like per se a role in taking the lead on any sort of action here other than just like general support for something that their residents are also voicing, uh, you know, uh, concerns over or something. I don't know. And I think there was uh, already a request to East Bay Parks and Rec if they would take part and they declined. Mm -hmm. Yes. Unfortunately. And I, I would like to put it out there. We're talking about maintenance. Um, if we're also talking about a playground, there is a level of risk and liability that one, it's pretty expensive to build safe playgrounds. Very, very expensive. And then there's liability that goes along with that. So just putting it out there, that might be something that is a higher goal or maybe a secondary goal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, I think the main messaging needs to be around like, this is a public park, right? And right. Uh, there are many things that can go along with a public park, including like all the potential for this commercial space in the front. Um, and I think there's, uh, you know, for me, like as like a child development person, like I, I conceptualize play in so many different ways. It doesn't have to be on a traditional playground, you know? <laughs> totally agreed. And, you know, being that we do need to change with the current times, I mean, this COVID thingy, it's not going to go away because we have so many obstinate people that are, you know, not complying. And so we do, like you were all saying, we definitely do need an outdoor space to yeah. have fun, to enjoy. And exactly right. We don't have that in El Sobrante. So that could definitely be um, something that I will be using in my conversations to get encourage folks to sign. And I okay. hope that after we get this park, uh, the San Pablo Creek will be used more efficiently for the public use and recreation. We have such a beautiful creek and uh, nobody knows about it or we don't take advantage of it. Well, that's one thing. If the park were acquired, then we're eligible um, to apply for grants for restoration. And uh, the Watershed Project and spawners, that's what they do. And, um, and there are lots of grants out there for that purpose. And the creek, San Pablo Creek needs restoration. Um, and if it were cleaned up and I guess someone sent a net on the next door just recently, they saw an otter. Yes, yes I saw that. Anyone else see that? Yeah. <laughs> so my neighbor, my neighbor's also seen the otter. She, she lives right on the creek and she was able to take video too. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, a lot of good things could happen there. Pretty awesome. Fishing again. So let's uh, plan to collect more than a thousand signatures by the end of the year and then invite John Joya in January and then follow up with him. And so um, how would we do collect the thousand? I mean, how do we figure out how to allocate or should we each have a certain responsibility or a goal to try and collect a certain number? Um, any ideas about that from anyone? Good idea. Let's brainstorm around it. I know there are people in my neighborhood that are not on any of the lists that I know about. So I'm, I could probably do it little door to door. I that. will prepare a petition now with place for signatures so you can print it out and take it to the neighborhood. Okay, that would be great. To other people so they can get it from you know friends and neighbors. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one way. I'll put everything in one email. And uh, the only way I know of is just keep sending emails repeatedly and ask people to sign and keep them updated about the number of uh, emails. I, I mean, the number of signatures and the petition that we have collected so far. And well, where does the email go to? Like the, the online signature, does it go to, to one, one of you or one of the people? It goes, uh, the um, citizens for Greener El Sobrante have access to all the signatures and once okay. they're collected, 
then we'll send a link to John Joya so we know how many signatures have been collected. Okay, thank you. When how does it get tallied? Does the program, this Adobe signature petition thingy, does it tally all the signature totals? Uh, you can count them. In the last petition, I was counting them. No, but will there be, a, that, uh, that, that's a good point. Will there be a number, if somebody goes on to the petition that says we no. have X number of signatures so far, and our no. goal is something like that. That's something that we'll have to be tracking internally um, as, a, as a group uh, who's managing kind of the back end of it. What it does is it, it, it generates a PDF per signature. And what we're doing is we're counting the number of petitions of PDFs um, manually, um, which is easy if it all goes into one folder and then you see how many files are there and that's the tally. Um, well, it, well, it numbers them, Kim, I'm not going to go count every time if they don't have numbers how many signatures there are. It's actually very easy. You don't have to count one by one. Like you see a set of 10 signatures and you just count the number of rows times 10. So it's not that difficult, something like that. Or if it's all saved in one file, like, you know, when you're looking at your files, it'll tell you there are, you know, 68 files in this folder. And that's how, you know, each individual file is a signature essentially. So that's, that's how it's going to work. I'm Do they have to be from El Bronte and Richmond, this area? Uh, we prefer people to be in the zip code 94803. Okay. That uh, contains El Sobrante and City of Richmond and all the people who can use the park. I believe a part of San Pablo is close to the park too. Um, just a kind of a thought about that. That restricts a lot, just yeah. for me personally, for my outreach. However, like uh, Sharon and, and Kim has been pointing out, we do get a lot of traffic from elsewhere from all over the Bay Area. They utilize this as a major thoroughfare between the freeways and just to get in between different locations. So that's why, in, in my personal opinion, I don't think that we should try to restrict it from that. Plus, it's gonna be very challenging for me to say, hey, everybody in 94803, sign this petition. And just, you know. That's a good yeah. point. Shall we I think, two I constituents think we of John Joya? Well, that, that's true because I go to parks that are outside of El Sobrante, of course. Yeah. Right. And, you know, we all go to other parks. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think we want as many signatures from 90, from 93, uh, from 983. Oh my God. 94803. <laughs> um, <laughs> have I mentioned that I'm nine months pregnant? <laughs> Things are hard to say sometimes. <laughs> um, anyway. Um, so I, you know, I think we want to emphasize as many from the immediate, you know, area as possible, but also I don't, you know, I don't think we should just restrict it. I think, you know, we just want a thousand signatures. <laughs> Good point. Well taken. Thank you, Zena, for the point. Yeah, that's important. Rena, do, Rena, do you know if the um, Hills Initiative Group would, um, that there's somebody that would be interested in using that mailing list. I can't, I don't, we don't I'm hear you. Mute, Rena. Don't, I don't hear you. have Rena. to unmute, Rena. Rena, we don't hear you. Okay, can you hear me there now? We go. Yes. Yeah, yeah. There's a couple of my neighbors who are really uh, at the heart of that initiative, and and of course we are done with it after the court of uh, a year. Um, the developers sued uh, the city of Richmond for voting unanimously in our favor, which threw it back into a court for about a year. Well, the decision after that it was it it remains so. We actually run, won a true victory, if there's such a thing. Okay, so yeah, I can let people know, but I have I wonder about next door. Um, you know, El Sobrani doesn't have his its own uh, next door. Like I'm on next door, but it's a May Valley next door, which is Richmond, right? And a and a different area code. So is is there a reason that I mean zip code? <laughs> is there a reason we have to stay in? nine four eight oh three with in terms of um 
because you'll have to put it on your petition as if it's a requirement, you'd have to say, you know, limited to residents in nine, 94803 only. I think we decided that was my mistake and anyone in Contra Costa County could sign it. Okay, all right. So then we can use any next door as well. Yes. Any sure. next door. Yeah. So and I think the more people who post on next door, the better, you know. Right. And so um, are, do you want us, I mean, I, we don't want to inundate like the May, the May Valley uh, next door, like for someone should be designated to get the petition on next door to each of the next doors that there are instead of, you know, them getting multiple requests that they might get kind of uh, resistant to that. Like, who do we pick to, you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm, I'm not very familiar with ne next doors other than I know I receive them and, you know, but I know that there are div divisions of it. And so would you assign people to contact different next door divisions so that not five of us are contacting the May Valley one? I think the way it works is we can only post to our local um, one, you know, like I, I can't, like I'm a May Valley resident, so I can't just like post directly to, you know, East Richmond Heights or whatever okay. the other neighborhoods are. But um, yeah, I think unfortunately it would, you know, that's how Nextdoor works is it's based on, on your address, but you can like select, you know, May Valley plus the surrounding areas. I just don't know how that like algorithm works or anything. Okay. Yeah. So will you be the one to do that for May Valley? Cause I'm in that too. So what? Yeah. I mean, I'm almost wondering if, you know, it, it would be like good to have other people like it's, so, so it's not just me one time, but like if I post it this week and Rena posts it next week um, and someone else posts it the week after that, maybe that keeps it, you know, it, it shows that other people are, are in, like, it's not just from me as coordinator of citizens for green or also brown or anything you know um it just kind of shows con that considering uh, that uh, kim may head to delivery room any day now we don't want to put much in her plate so <laughs> um, yeah i mean i i'll definitely share a link to the petition soon but it would be great if other people could do it you know a few days after each time or something i don't mind doing it either second or third time around just uh, need to know when you when you put it there. Okay, if anybody has any resources, you can spread it. Uh, please share now or feel free to email me. I put my email address in the chat. We can get all the help that we can, and your help is very much appreciated. Any more questions or ideas? Uh, I'll look for the Facebook post. It, it'll be really easy for me to share that as wide as possible. Um, but I did sign it already. Thank you guys. Okay, great. Wonderful. Yeah, I put the link in the chat. So let me know if there's any issues with accessing the link to the petition, but hopefully you guys are able to access it. I will also send the YouTube video um, right now in the chat. Um, and I'll also, um, I'm having a, a little bit of glitches with the website right now, but um, our website, I will also include a link to here, um, but hopefully the petition will be posted on our website soon once I'm able to access it. And please remind people once they sign, they need to validate their signature. An email will be sent to them from the petition. They need to validate it. Yeah, so just a note on that. Um, you know, you'll get um, an email. So once you put your information into the petition, you'll get an email from Adobe Sign. And then once you validate it, you'll get um, another email from 94803 Emergency Readiness Alliance. Um, so just FYI that those are the things that you'll look for in your inbox. And Kim, you're going to send it to the C for Ages mailing lists too? Yeah, yeah. So Sharon, you may wanna inform the owners that we're working on buying it from them hopefully soon. Don't sell it to anyone else, please. Well, it's, not, it's not us, it's going to be the county. 
Yes. I mean, just give them heads up that there is work underway. Our latest strategy. <laughs> okay. Very good. Thank you very much, everyone. We are close to one hour. Any last comments, questions, suggestions? Yeah. No, I, I see John. I, John, I see you, John Pitt. Yes. Hi. I can't hear yes, you. I'm, I'm just listening in. I'm sort of listening in for the Elks Lodge. I know. I was thinking that. And I was thinking, well, you're here to, to spy on us. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Well, we want something useful done on that property after all the stuff we did for the last. Uh, your support and the Elks Lodge yeah. support, since you know those mm -hmm. two properties are they're they're neighbors, they're connected, and something wonderful could. It, really it is a nice property. We have a lot of people come down just to see the turkeys and the turkey babies and the deer and the deer babies. Mm -hmm. A lot of um, families come down just to watch the wildlife. We want, some people come down and run their dog down, but we also have people up in trash on our property too doing it and we just picked one up uh last uh wednesday he parked there let his dog out and he was throwing cans of buckets of paint out on our back 40. So oh, no. we want good things to happen in the area yeah, yeah. um the, you know the maoris took down the structures that were there so now yes it's well it burned down four or five times they had at mm -hmm. least three dead bodies found in there and mm -hmm. badness so we let's do something good with it yeah, have you seen any issues with the homeless? Because that wasn't- Oh, they still go back there. They try to make something. We ask them not to. We try to direct them to a, a couple of the county projects that will help them. But, uh, you know, they'll listen to how they're, like they listened the day before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, nice to That'd see- That'd be you. my only worry about if it was a park, it would have become a park for them to hang out with all day and half the night. Mm -hmm. and, well, studies show that when there's an interest in somewhere and uh, it's utilized, that that's that's discouragement, um, and um, and there'll be security too, and uh, activities going on. And I, you know, the communities, if the community is invested, we'll take care of the homeless. System. And Sharon, you make a, you know to expand on your point. I believe you had a write up previously describing some of that. It might even be on mm -hmm. the description for the original petition on it, where it talks about uh, permanent security fencing, mm -hmm. uh, security cameras. Mm -hmm. Well, the locksmith downtown, um, that, that little shop, uh, he agreed to give us all the surveillance equipment at cost um, and to help with the security issues. Um, so I don't know where he stands with that now, but he he, um, he was very supportive. That's cool. And I know that Joya, and I didn't see it on the ballot, so I think that might have fallen through. Joya was putting together a group uh, to um, um, try and get on the ballot uh, an initiative for a full-time security person just for El Sobrante. I don't know what happened with that, he asked, he invited me to be a part of that panel, but I declined uh, for, for several reasons. But, um, you know, that could happen too, you know, just we have with added security and surveillance and community response and, um, you know, just de developing uh, the presence and uh, awareness that, um, I don't think it's, we have homeless here. Every city has some homeless and, um, you know, we just have to figure out how to deal with it. Get them homeless. One of the things that could happen, I would security measures. Mm -hmm. uh, Sorry, John, you don't have a good connection. I think that there was previous fear at the library when the, we were asking the library to give us access to the bathrooms after library hours when we were utilizing the library after hours with all of our specific clubs and whatnot. And that was a huge discussion. And it the resolution was like, it's not going to be a problem like that because 
of like what Sharon was saying. When there's a space that is being utilized heavily, that discourages that negative type of behavior and they actually respect it also because that's also what they're looking for. Some, something nice also, not just, you know, trashiness all over the place too. Mm -hmm. And there's the green team. There's, I think they're still working. Um, is that mm -hmm. right? And, mm -hmm. and they, they um, police the downtown periodically and clean up the trash. So that, you know, the park part, they could be a part of that, expand it. Mm -hmm. You know, and then there's the Boy, is Boy Scouts and the Club Scouts and the Boys and Girls Club. They'd be wonderful. The youth would be wonderful, a wonderful group to get involved, you know, to volunteer and create projects for cleanup and, um, they can learn how to weed and, and do trimming and stuff. There's all kinds of projects that could be, that could evolve. Um, it, would be, it would be very exciting. Thank you very much. Indeed, very exciting. Thank you very much, citizens, for a Green El Sobrante. And thank you all for participating tonight. This meeting comes to an end now. Many thanks thank again. So and our goal is 1,000 signatures by the end of December 2020. We'll and let's do uh, it. Celebrate the new year <laughs> with 1,000 signatures. Yeah. We'll we, we have to appeal to, to the giving part of the season. Yes, exactly. Have a good night. And we're not asking for money. We're just asking for signatures. <laughs> exactly. So. exactly. Good point. Good point. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Sahela, for putting this Bye. together. Of course. My pleasure and honor. Good to good see night. you guys. Thanks. Bye.